Hello, I'm Janet Dick and I'm one of the gardeners at the Westport Community Garden which is also one of the Patrick Geddes Gardens in Edinburgh. My life has been shaped by decision makers who have no vision and who are replaced every four years by myopic clones. I have wasted so much time listening to these people. I have used every tool available to me through the democratic process. I've written to and met with councillors, MPs, MSPs and senior members of staff. I've joined committees and set up resident groups. I've wrangled at licensing and planning committees. I've done TV and radio slots. I've hung banners from my windows and I've marched the length and breadth of the country in protests. To date, it's done little or nothing for me or for the city. We get tokenistic changes that placate people for a short time, but very little has been done with achieving long-lasting effect. Things get worse. Outside my front door, we have two glass files measuring levels of nitrogen dioxide. They show that throughout the year, my family is breathing gigantic levels of toxicity. Cars, vans, lorries, delivery vehicles to all the pubs, cafes, restaurants and hotels, along with all the fucking tourist buses clog up the roads and our bronchial tubes. The planners approved this despite a shitload of regulations which set limits and better standards. Whose interests they're serving is a question you'd have to ask them because I'm done with useless talk. Instead, into the garden I go. Throughout the year and in all weather, I have a wardrobe now of permanently grubby clothes. I still enjoy choosing which dirty frock will go well with the dirty leggings and be topped off by practical colourful woolen socks and a pair of shorn off wellies. For the company I keep, I'm perfectly attired and if the socks are bright enough, I sometimes manage to upstage the goldfinches. But woman cannot live by birds alone. Humankind forces itself upon us all whether we invite it or not. A happy band of gardeners are we, working collectively at times and best of all, silently, alone. Any group of people will have their differences, and we do, but in one single issue we are all agreed. No weed killer and no pesticide. It works well so long as everybody is doing their bit, for this rule can result in repetitive and back-breaking work. Some recently acquired prayer mats have helped protect our knees and who knows, perhaps our industry will channel some divine force into glorious new garden growth. Good as the mats are though, they do not protect us from the hardest pain of all, the committee. A residents' association watches the work of the gardeners. It makes no contribution to the daily toil and holds the strings to the funds. We manage just by raising manage from public donations, which irks the committee. A great amount of energy is spent considering ways to work with it or around it, and it goes nowhere. We spend our money on plants, tools and repair work. It's hard to understand why anybody would be put out by this. My own journey into gardening was in response to years of wasted time at meetings, being part of committees and organisations that enjoyed talking and doing very little. I can't be part of that process anymore. My body tells me with every aching muscle and joint that action is what counts, hoeing and sowing, not hoping and moping. It brings rewards. The garden is gratefully admired by hundreds of locals and visitors. For the gardeners, this praise is encouraging. Our work is recognised and acknowledged by others. A long list of trees, shrubs, flowers, bulbs and other organic material could be provided as further evidence here, but it would not do justice 
to the garden and the gardeners. You have to see it for yourself. Maybe even get dirty. It's impossible to spend time outdoors among trees, plants, birds and other quietly busy buzzing things without being in awe. Every time I walk into our garden, I stand still to watch and listen. Leaving the noise of the traffic behind me, I look forward and upwards to the bird feeders amongst the boughs of an elm. The garden continues with its own routine, and if I am patient, I can enjoy 10 minutes of feeding, preening, bathing, in-flight squabbling. Goldfinches excel at this and the bird song of up to six different varieties. Robins, dunnock and blue tits will remain at their activities if I walk slowly and further into their territory. Nothing quite equals the joy of being allowed to get close to such small, vulnerable and trusting life. The goldfinches, greenfinches and bullfinches will give you a two-minute soap opera if you stand stock still. Their hasty retreat is no less enjoyable. A marvellous flurry of reds, yellows, greens and blacks with high-pitched tones warning others that an intruder is amongst them. The garden belongs to them, really.